got my favorite, a ribeye. All right, this is a seven bone center cut primal ribeye. And as we go along, you'll hear me say this more than once, there's a continual muscle that goes through the entire animal, comes out of the chuck eye, which is the end of the shoulder. So you got two sides of your ribeye, you got a chuck side with different muscle structures, and then more traveling down that muscle towards the New York strip or the strip loin, or the sirloin as it were. So you got a little bit more of a fatty steak on one end, leaner steak on the other, and that muscle continues into the strip loin and then into the top sirloin. So here is where we're gonna get our ribeyes. These are all bone in. I'm gonna cut probably three, four bone ins for the shop, and then I'll take the beef back ribs off for those of us who love the rib flavor that's so delicious, and then we'll do some boneless uh, ribeyes. All right, I'm gonna do two bone-in ribeye cuts here for you. I'm gonna do one off the chuck end and one that's more towards the New York end, and then I'll show you the differences between the two. All right, here we go. Boom. Oh yeah, baby. All right, you can see how that one has a lot more stru muscle structure to it. It's gonna be a little bit more tender. Okay, bang and bang. Look at the difference. It's enormous. Both very tender looking, okay? As you can see, there's a muscles clusters, okay, up here. I can't remember all the scientific names. My buddy Kevin just told me all about it from Beast and Cleaver, but I'm not the science guy, I'm just the butcher guy. You can dissect all these muscles down into the shoulder and how it runs through the muscle itself to where it dissipates into just this one main muscle, right? So you got New York side, as you can see, it's gonna be a little bit more meat, a little less fat. This guy's structure has a lot more marbleization, a lot more fatty bits in there. I like to cook those medium because those fatty bits are gonna be melty just enough for me to eat them. There you go, one from each side. So I took off some bone-in ribeyes off of each side. Gonna put those in the case for this, the grillers weekend coming up. Fourth of July coming up. And then I'm gonna clean this up real quick and do some boneless ribeyes for the case. Well, look at that, that'd be a great little ribeye roast, wouldn't it? Christmas dinner right there. And uh, I've got a couple people that come in just for the back ribs. Specifically asked for the back ribs, which is nice because I think it's a very underutilized product. I love back ribs, and I'll show you why when I take these off. Biggity, biggity, bang. Okay, there we go. Nice cuts, nice cuts. All right, why are these rad? Check them out. Look at all that meat inside right there, right? So you can either do a hole like that, grill them, super hot roast in the oven, or you can cut them singularly. Check that out. Look at all that meat on that bone. That's like a baby back rib right there, right? It's like the baby back rib of beef. Who doesn't like that? That's delicious. All right. Now I'm gonna cut these guys. As you can see, you have a nice straight line, right? So I can just do nice even steaks, anywhere from 12 to 18 ounces, depending on what people want. Super duper easy. Okay, just like that. And now, boom, got your back ribs and your beautiful ribeye steak. Look at that, lovely, bang.